So here we are doing another interview for the Veterans History Project, the Library of Congress project that is done here in Cincinnati, and actually it's done in a number of other cities also. And the idea is not necessarily to get people who won the Medal of Honor, but to get people who served and find out what they did. And of course, we know that you did uh, quite a bit. Mr. Owen Knight, who I understand has other names. He likes to likes to say, and I'm trying to recall. And t today, of course, is February 20th, uh, uh, 2013. Mm -hmm. And uh, it occurs to me from our our introductory talking, it might be interesting for you to tell me how it is that you had so many names. I'm. Um, it, it, it's more of a, I think, a British type custom, and um, in our part of the country, we uh, we were pretty much. British and, uh, and mm. it was uh, uh, custom to have four names. My, my cousin had six um, uh, names uh -huh. uh, and uh, then he, he uh, left her and went back. To and, and where was that? Where did you grow up? Uh, I grew up in Maryland. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And where in Maryland then? Sitting right outside of D.C. It's a sister state of Virginia. Mm -hmm. And um, and we were uh, southern, yeah. And we lost the war. Uh, we, well, and we we know that of course here on the other side of the river they speak of the the uh, the war of northern aggression. Uh, yeah. uh, but here we are, and we know we've just recently there's been uh, some writing about the the conspiracy that that uh, that almost killed uh, uh, Lincoln mm -hmm. on his way to the inauguration. Uh, my wife is from uh, Baltimore or yeah. Balmer, as they say they call it. That's and my, right, where, they, where yeah. they invited the main soldiers in. Yes. And then closed the city and stoned them. And uh -huh. we were the last state, I think, to finish paying our war reparations. Yeah. The, uh, my, uh, my wife's one grandmother was six years old in 1960 mm. uh, and was told to get ready to run mm. because the Yankees are coming yeah. uh, and she put some things together in a little box mm. and then turns she didn't have to run. Of course, the Connecticut regiment, you may recall, came through there. Mm -hmm. Let's see, you go back pretty far in your well, military. Uh, yeah. and I know they had the uh, reunion memorial march where the, in 1938, when uh, the, what was left of the Union Army and what was left of the Confederate forces joined together for, for a memorial march in D.C. Mm -hmm. And my father wouldn't let me go to that because he didn't think the Confederate soldiers should be marching with the Yankees. Yeah. <laughs> well, my, a good, very good friend of mine who's gone now, uh, Lauren Hodge's father, was, I believe, the last commander of the GAR mm -hmm. and led the last parade in the early 30s mm -hmm. uh, down Pennsylvania Avenue. He was... 1938. Well, when, when he did it, would it have been that one in 38 or earlier than 30s? May it would have been that one. 38. And he was a boy telegrapher uh, in the uh, in 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 the war, uh, that war. Uh, and uh, I I did never knew him, but I knew his son, who was a pioneer aviator. Was uh, there's so many different stories that, that we could tell in this thing. So uh, so you. Uh, so your father didn't let you go That's right. because he didn't want to march with yeah, the Yankees. Yeah, he didn't want to march with the Yankees. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. How'd you feel about that? Well, I was disappointed because it was I, it was an historical event, and mm -hmm. I thought that uh, uh, one of my classmates' uh, grandfather was marching, mm -hmm. and uh, our whole school except me went to to join with him and and watch his grandfather march and all the rest of the. Uh, uh, so, so Union and yeah. Confederate. Down Pennsylvania Avenue. Yes, indeed. As I recall. Uh, yes, indeed. That was. And I did want to take part in it. Yeah. In and so many of these guys, like for example, at, at the, the 50th anniversary of Gettysburg, mm -hmm. uh, even before World War I, mm -hmm. and a lot of these men really seemed to be, uh, what shall we say, a, a, a reunion for them. Mm -hmm. uh, in a sense, respected each other, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps. Yeah. And how do you feel now, looking back, now with the military service that you had, of how many years, by the way, did you serve? Uh, I was between four and five years. Mm -hmm. Between four and five. Four and five years. Yeah. And, four and, seven. and in, uh, that was uh, Korea? 1950. I went in in 1950. Mm -hmm. And got out in 55. 
and so that was your term was in Korea. And from these pictures we have uh, that you uh, uh, served in Korea. Yeah. You know? well, yes. I and was. if you went in, when did you actually go over there? If you if you went on active duty in 1950, when did you actually go over? In 52. Mm hmm. I got there in the summer of 52. I think that's. It was. That's when my friend graduated from West Point mm -hmm. uh, at, uh, at that point and then went over in, in 53. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my, another of my high school classmates was at Pusan. Mm -hmm. He was some of the, the troops that, pre that held that, uh, uh, that beachhead uh, and, and set it up so that you were able to go over later. Yeah. Uh, so what, in what service were you? What was your MOS? Uh, I was an infantry. Mm -hmm. and, um, and among my uh, uh, things that I brought in were my uh, CIB, Combat Infantry Badge. Uh -huh. And uh, that was what these orders were for, uh, for getting the uh, uh, CIB. I seem to recall you didn't get that just by being there. You didn't. Yeah. Uh, it was for being a good soldier. Mm -hmm. Though they do say they gave it to you before you earned it. Uh huh. And it might have been uh, very much my case. I got it before we had much. Uh, um, and uh, and what was your uh, your rate then when you uh, when you got out? Uh, I was a sergeant. Sergeant. In fact, um, uh, I wore my, um, oh yes, a tanker, if you please. Uh huh. But this was my um, yeah. One of my great and other shirts have a, yeah. a third infantry. Tank. And you were a buck sergeant. The three striper? Um, one. Yes, sir. Uh, the staff sergeant. Staff sergeant. Okay, I was a three striper in the Marines. Mm -hmm. uh, the closest we got to Vietnam was when there was scuttlebutt we were going to go to Dien Bien Phu, and of course mm -hmm. we didn't. But we found out that really was what they were talking about. Yeah. So what else? What else can you say about your your experience uh, in uh, in Korea? Well, it was cold. And that mm -hmm. was the one thing I remember most vividly was the cold. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, well, the, the beauty of the cold is, is one thing. And then, of course, we would go out and lay on the ice, you know, uh, mm -hmm. in front of um, our uh, main line of resistance. Mm -hmm. So that... Uh, the MLR, eh? Yes, the MLR. So that um, the uh, Koreans or the Chinese where they wanted to, um, where they thought they, we were, and wanted to investigate and see how strong our line was at various points that they could get in there, mm -hmm. would hit us before they uh, expected to. And we would be out laying on the ice in front of the line. So. Mm -hmm. And so that was cold. We'd lay out there all night long until, until they uh, could see the beginnings of the dawn. And, mm -hmm. uh, didn't call it frozen chosen for nothing. Ah, so did you get that far to chosen? Mm -hmm. Did you get that far north to, to well, chosen? Chosen was a Japanese name for the entire uh, Korea. Uh huh. Chosen. Mm hmm. I'm recalling the chosen reservoir, and I knew some of those Marines who who served there. Mm -hmm. Who the the chosen few as they, as they call them? So uh, uh, you must have had some fighting then when you were out there in front of the lines. Um, we didn't get hit by uh, on on those particular. Uh, I didn't get hit on those particular mm -hmm. uh, uh, particular uh, ambush uh, mm -hmm. ex, uh, excursions. Mm -hmm. Some got hit, and uh, I didn't. So, but you were, did you do some, uh, were you, uh, did you do some firing yourself from your positions? Or did you just lay, uh, In uh, that particular uh, situation, we were as quiet as we could be, and we didn't fire at all unless we got hit. Mm -hmm. uh, we were to surprise them, mm -hmm. but uh, we didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, we stayed quiet, and, uh -huh. and we didn't get hit. One reason was that we were in Fox, I was in Fox Cup. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they were going to hit anybody, they would hit, swing off and hit George, or they would swing off and hit Easy, and we were sitting pretty. Uh, the old phonetic alphabet, exactly. you know, like Abel and so on. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, well, you may have been around. One of, another one of my high school classmates was commissioned as a platoon commander in the ROTC, and uh, he got to his billet on Christmas Eve, and his, the lieutenant he was to replace was all suited up, and uh, Bob says, who's now a retired colonel, and he said, let me take the, the patrol. He said, no, that's all right. I'm ready to go, and you can imagine what happened. Well, he didn't come back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So, so you were, um, uh, you must have been as a staff sergeant then. Uh, well, I wasn't a staff over there. Uh huh. I was a corporal. At that, well, that's uh, that's uh, pretty good. You were able to to give some uh, to had some people under you. Wear a green patch on. on uh huh. Presumably, you never saw a mash unit then. If, if you one of the one of the mash units, like the uh, like the television series. Oh well, I, um, it's a little in the dark on, on that. Uh huh. I, the, the, about the only mash thing that I uh, remember seeing was my feeling that it didn't look much like Korea. Uh huh. But, um, I never seen much of, of that. I'm not really much of. Uh huh. Haven't. Uh, had a television, mm -hmm. and so that's where that is. So you apparently, as a corporal, then you were able to take care of your people. We tried. As infantry. Yeah, we did our best. Mm -hmm. I understand you were a BAR man part of the time. Uh, even as a, a squad leader, I carried mm -hmm. BAR. The Browning automatic rifle. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. but I thought that was the best weapon in the service, and I uh -huh. think it'd be pretty hard for your. Uh, for anybody to beat with any of these modern weapons. Well, I uh, I never fired one. I, I knew how to, I learned how to field strip it, mm. and then I have That's a friend, a yeah, a friend, a friend here, and and the M1, of course, we yeah. we uh, we stripped uh, also. We also had the Enfields. Mm -hmm. We also had an Enfield 03. Oh, Enfields, mm -hmm. is that so? How did you happen to get a British rifle? Well, um, the thing was that uh, there was a World War One. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of the, uh, uh, Korea was a little more like World War I, I think, than it was like World War II in its time. We had mm -hmm. trench warfare and all the trenches and we kept uh, mm -hmm. building more and going up and uh, building mm -hmm. trench, trench warfare. And the M1 was uh, more accurate than the Garand, as they said. And so, uh -huh. so they gave us, uh, uh, in our outfit we got a, uh, an Enfield per, uh, uh, I guess per squad, an Enfield per uh, squad, so uh -huh. you have somebody that had a really accurate weapon. That is the, the eight men in the, uh, in the squad? Yes. I think uh, would have Enfields. Um, and um, the squads, the rear squads seem to be were bigger than that. Um, hmm. Well, how did you get the Enfields? We didn't ask, we never asked for anything. They just ship them up and we take what we get. Uh huh, yeah. That's what we just took them. And somebody got the notion to send a certain mm -hmm. amount of Enfields. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Did you serve with a, the, any of the other units in the United Nations Command, such as the British, for uh, example? Sure did. Um, and uh, they, um, we had London artillery behind us at one point. Mm -hmm. They send the um, uh, forward observer for their uh, artillery up mm -hmm. to our squad, mm -hmm. and uh, um, and uh, that was a, a big surprise to some of them when we when they all of a sudden came up and asked a question and they got a British accent uh -huh. from the person to whom they were speaking. They were uh -huh. yeah, and was that any uh, kind of a problem? Uh, we just tickled pink to have London artillery. They were really professionals. They were, uh, we get rotated uh, faster than they did, and they had plenty of time to get lots of practice. Mm -hmm. They were better than we were. Mm -hmm. really and why so? Uh, got more practice. They, mm -hmm. were, uh, we, they didn't rotate as fast as something. Mm -hmm. They were more, uh, more of a professional. Now, the second was uh, more of an old time professional outfit than the third was. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, the observer, that was when I was in the 
and the 38th of the second. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, well, we enjoyed them. We enjoyed them. And then they had their, um, uh, when we um, were all flying in, uh, in a mm -hmm. Scotia Reserve, mm -hmm. well, they had their um, the theologians up th there with them. And that was sort of uh, fun too, if you could go back. And, uh, like uh, tea time? Um, Brew up? Mm -hmm. or whatever, and, mm -hmm. and, and if you were in reserve, well, you could slip away to, to the times, not too often. Did you uh, serve with, the chaplains serve you? Were you close enough to the, to the military chaplains? Um, when we were in reserve, they were, uh, were um, mm -hmm. if, the, uh, if there wasn't too much storm about it, they mm -hmm. sort of served. I know uh, um, one time the first the first sergeant said um, that um, uh, he said the, the chaplain over there he says he's holding some sort of services but anybody that steps across that road uh, gets my foot right oh, just right. Uh, for, you know where. for going over to do it he, he said that uh, the churches are wandering over here uh -huh. he wasn't going to okay anybody going across the road when we were in our yeah. Country. Would it perhaps be uh, uh, a little less cover going over that way? Um, he just didn't uh, think that we should be spending our time that way. There are too many other important things that he thought we should be doing. For example? Cleaning our weapons and making sure they're in absolute working order and, uh, and digging uh, 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 ditches and uh, digging anything. That was the main purpose of the infantryman was to dig. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I guess we got to be better diggers than about any, anybody. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, how about your uh, casualty rate? We uh, lost people. Yeah. yeah. And. Uh, In some places, we Yeah. That was, that was the army. We, yeah. Well, Did you move much? Did you move around very much? I did, yes. We did move around and mm -hmm. got moved. Mm -hmm. And volunteer for it. Mm -hmm. So you say you, you got there when, got to Korea when? In, in 52, did you say? 52, yeah. And then left in? Um, when the war was over, I don't know when that was, but mm -hmm. I was there until then. Well, of course, the truce was in 53. So uh, time in 53. Pan Jam. I'm, go north, and we mm -hmm. were going to follow the Sherman tanks, uh -huh. and, uh, and we were all separate, and I wasn't looking forward to that, very mm -hmm. definitely I wasn't looking forward yeah. to that, because uh, I figured that the shrapnel flying off the tanks uh, and following the tanks would have been uh, a real pain in the butt, uh -huh. but um, all of a sudden there was, they, I guess there were planes flying over with green batters or what, and that we'd been looking for for the whole war, and all of a sudden there they were, and we were, yeah. we ended. We how close, uh, how close were you to Pan Wen Jam, uh, uh, the, uh, where the truce talks were being held? We were on the front line, and, uh, and then we just pulled back uh, off to, uh, to get with the tanks, mm -hmm. and um, as I recall, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then war ended, and we were so surprised. Mm -hmm. uh, we thought, we, of course, they've been holding peace talks mm -hmm. since I first gotten there. Mm -hmm. But we didn't think anything would come of them. Well, one thing, there were rumors that uh, they'd had big uh, famine in China and that they were trying to get rid of their men. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was one thing we thought we were um, up against was, uh, was China really wanting to keep on fighting because they, because they uh, were overpopulated. Mm -hmm. That was a rumor going around. Of course, you can discount mm -hmm. rumors. As, I mean, you know where rumors are. Mm -hmm. But yeah. that was what the talk was. Mm -hmm. So uh, where were you to Pork Chop Hill, for example? Um, well, um, I was 
sitting uh, in, in the 38, Fox 38, we were, we had Sugarloaf right in front of us. Uh-huh. And, um, and then later on, we were uh, with another outfit, when I got switched around, mm -hmm. we um, uh, were uh, in the um, um, outpost Henry, uh, uh, mm -hmm. that area. And we, in fact, we pulled a raid off of the outpost Henry mm -hmm. at one time and mm -hmm. took a hill away from the Chinese, uh -huh. which was quite a, uh, quite a thing. Uh, and in what sense? Well, what? it was a daylight uh, raid, and we usually went, um, we usually um, uh, were pulled our, um, our, our things that, uh, daylight was usually more peaceful, and night was when all the action was taking place, it's a usual thing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you, and if you were going to hit somebody, you hit them, uh, in the dark before dawn, and then when the dawn came up, well, you could reform and reorganize where you were and, mm -hmm. and see what, where you were and what was around. Yeah. But, uh, but this was daylight. Mm -hmm. Well, Dick told about, uh, you know, he played football at West Point, too. He was, Ooh, he well, was, you know, yeah, uh-huh, uh, yes. Bob Olds, uh, who was tackling, and uh, uh, DeWitt called her, and all that group, uh, they Mr. Outside, Mr. Inside. Oh, and the Dawkins was one of those guys? Uh, I think As so. I recall, and, uh, Pete Dawkins. And Davis. Well, actually, they were with you then. Um, no, but, there? I remember but, but you remember Bob them. Was, oh, yes. Uh, uh, with, yeah. Um, uh, well, Dick's, uh, uh, yeah. one of Dick's uh, uh, teammates was a, was a Shea, Lieutenant Shea, mm -hmm. and he survived Pork Chop mm -hmm. Hill. Uh, but Dick. That was uh, didn't, yeah. They, uh, of there was the movie. You may have seen the movie, yeah. That, uh, oh my goodness, I'm trying to remember now who the star was. Gregory Peck, I think, maybe was the. Well, maybe it was, was a different the, movie. I saw the star. Um, I don't remember that there were any movie stars in the one I saw, uh, but it was uh, uh, about a wounded colonel that uh, um, uh, all of a sudden came back to where he could move around and direct things and, uh, uh -huh. and direct it, uh, and uh, directed the uh, uh, small group to get out of the problem. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand that you've, uh, you've had a, a career, should we call it a career, as a musician, as a uh, rock not musician? Not a career at all. I was a, a career as a janitor. Uh, okay. But um, I've enjoyed uh, my association with the musical. And playing the saw, I believe you said? I did play the saw. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. How do you do that? Um, it's not hard. You, uh, it takes an S bend in the saw, and then uh -huh. you just tap it, and you get a, uh, a ring, uh, yeah. a little bit like a steel guitar. And it was popular in the days before electricity was, mm -hmm. was um, uh, so available. And how did you get into that? Uh, it, it was what they used on the farm back home. Which and is where, by the way? I don't think I had. It, you said in Maryland, but, yeah. but oh, and apparently Maryland being not that big a state. Yeah, uh, I was born in Sandy Spring, and uh, we uh -huh. had a farm behind Rockville, when Rockville was a... Oh, yes, place. have kids who live there, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's where our, our family's farm was. And, uh -huh. we, and our family, had, uh, we were uh, old-time Marylanders, I mean, uh -huh. sitting there in Maryland for a long time. Mm -hmm. My uh, one daughter... Uh, uh, graduated from University of Baltimore, was sworn in in the Court of Appeals chamber, which you may know is the same chamber that they used back in the in the uh, uh, 17th century. Yeah. When they built a new building, they just picked it up and put it inside. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, we uh, we were sort of in on that sort of thing. Uh huh. Um, I mean, uh, we were right there with with political things were going on in D.C. Uh huh. Like. Um, like who was that? Uh, that uh, uh, Spiro Agnew, that vice president. Oh, I was thinking of going further back. To the oh, <laughs> okay. Was, Miller tidings even back that far. Uh, well, he was a, mis it was a mistake uh, that uh, the um, a Democratic Party, uh, who should have been controlling everything like usual, um, I think had uh, had a conflict in their own in their own ranks. And, uh huh. 
And Agnew snuck in when the Democrats were fighting. I think Mahoney and, and uh, was one of them that uh, was uh -huh. in, giving trouble. Yeah. Maribel or something. But anyway, um, yeah. so, so Agnew got in. But I, yeah. I think of Maryland politics further back. As, as even farther back. Well, mm -hmm. my father landed at Locust Point mm -hmm. in uh, 1914. Mm -hmm. Uh, just before World War One, he managed the family managed to to get here, and then they went uh, west to St. Louis. But at Locust Point, and you, I'm sure you've been out there near McHenry, uh, the uh, the building where they went through process is still there, but the the piers are only pilings. But the railroad, you remember the B and O immigrant trains? I love the railroads. Yeah, I, I the B and O. B and O, and just um, rode all over. Mm -hmm. the old days. Yeah. Were my oh, I, yeah. I love steam engines too. Love trains anyway, but especially steamers. Yeah. Well, the railroad, the tracks are still there. That the that the B and O you knew, that, of course, about the B and O immigrant trains, where the immigrants would process through the sheds and then they would go off wherever they went. Some of them stayed in Baltimore, yeah. and my family and the family, as they said, didn't. Mm -hmm. um, but then, how did you happen to get into the service? Uh -huh. I got my notice in, uh, b before they declared the peace of World War II, mm -hmm. but I decided since uh, it was looked all over but the shouting, and I didn't want to go doing KP while all these heroes were marching in parades, uh -huh. so I told Dad I'd go back to school. Mm -hmm. And so he uh, put my transcripts or whatever under his arm, and, and, uh, and so uh, we went and applied to... Uh, a college. Baltimore? Uh, Maryland? Uh, Maybe? Uh, I, I, had, I did end up by going to Maryland, but this was Washington College. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was for family school. My mm -hmm. family had, uh, had a tradition of going to uh, mm -hmm. uh, Washington College. My Say again the name? Washington? Uh, it was named for Washington. He was on the oh, yeah. Board of Visitors and Governors there, and they uh -huh. asked if they could use his name, and mm -hmm. he said, oh, yeah. And of course, you've seen the, uh, the, the, the monument to Washington, which was the, as you know, was the first one built to honor Washington. Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, Ramboonsboro. Uh huh. Uh, and how did you. Uh, was, mm hmm. Was and how did you get here? Um, well, uh, all the farmland was uh, being filled up with, with houses and roads. And oh, yes. Mm -hmm. run over everything. And so I wanted to go out where there were was wide open space again in the countryside. And so mm -hmm. went out west uh, mm -hmm. in the middle of the country. But then again, I didn't like the climate out there and anything, so I thought I'd come further east and that uh, mm -hmm. somebody needed uh, some help here in Cincinnati. And, and what did you do? Um, what was your work? Uh, well, um, I was a janitor at the time. Mm -hmm. The most important person in the place, then, that keeps it clean. Uh, he, uh, he takes care of the, he's in charge of the comings and the goings, you know, Janus. Indeed, the, yes. The, the god of, of uh, the past and the future, the past of the comings in and the goings out. Uh huh. And so, uh, and so I figured it was an important job. My father wasn't too thrilled with it, I'm sure. He said he didn't understand why somebody that uh, was qualified to teach would be satisfied. Uh -huh. I had other things I wanted to do. It was the yay, days of the hippies, and we were all doing our thing, and so I wanted to do my thing. And, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, being, a, being a school teacher wouldn't have give, given me enough time to, to under those, uh, that sort of hippie definition, do my thing, and so I was a dad. Uh -huh. And how long did you do that? When did you retire? I retired about 20 years ago. Um, hmm. Shortly after my 65th birthday, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that was about 20 years ago. And now you're uh, about 66. Uh, and that's right. A little older than that? A, a, a little older. <laughs> and that? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you miss the military at all? I, um, I sort of do. Um, mm -hmm. But I, uh, there again, I have to uh, uh, put a, a little bit. I don't think the military is a good place for a soldier in right now, um, really. Um, the, uh, uh, it's, 
it's too complicated as far as uh, um, well, who the enemy is and who you should be shooting and all that mm -hmm. sort of thing. And, and, and uh, I would have a lot of questions about that. And so, mm -hmm. uh, and so it's I heard a talk last night just by a retired major general mm -hmm. who has some concerns about the way things are done. And he was infantry. His, uh, yeah, that was his thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. The, uh, so you got out in 55. Uh, five. Mm -hmm. And where did you go then? I applied to, uh, I thought a good way to get out of the service would be to apply to a college and be left college to go into the military, and mm -hmm. they sent me another draft notice when I was in college. Mm. And I thought, well, they're fighting another war, and so, uh, and so uh, I did go in then. Mm -hmm. I didn't keep on uh, being deferred then. And which year then, for sure? Uh, that was 52. That was 52? Oh, yeah. Uh, went in uh, in 50. Yeah. And so, um, and so, uh, um, uh, well, I decided to um, I was drafted and decided mm -hmm. to go on in and, and, uh, and did. Mm -hmm. Went down to Hood and, uh, and uh, got our basic training. We have an interesting thing here that I hadn't seen one of these in a long time, but the, the roster yeah. of, of the, the uh, men with whom you served and all men on the lines in those days. Yeah. Uh, do you, are you still in touch? you remember? Uh, some of these people? Uh, yes. Um, none of these, uh, the ones that I would have been uh, mm -hmm. uh, in contact with very mm -hmm. definitely, they're deceased now, but mm -hmm. um, from um, mm -hmm. the third division, mm -hmm. uh, one of my, uh, uh, whom I still have, uh, uh, I didn't bring it, but one of the pictures whom I, which I almost bought, mm -hmm. uh, showed me standing next to uh, Sergeant Cox of Camelsville, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. We got a Christmas card from Sergeant Cox uh, last Christmas. Just this year? Yeah. Or last, last Christmas. Christmas. And he's still in health and uh, uh -huh. tobacco farm. And oh, that, that must be interesting to have a tobacco farm in these days. Uh, yes, I thought <laughs> so myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did you grow on your farm? What did you grow on your farm oh, uh, back in Maryland? Nothing you could think of. Hmm? Um, hmm? Nothing. Uh, yeah, we uh, we had um, we had uh, um, a farm that was um, uh, in the de in the uh, depression, really. What they call the depression, though, I didn't mm -hmm. really. Uh, things were never to. But we had fresh air. And, Mm -hmm. Plenty of sunshine and beautiful fields and wonderful, wonderful life, and we grew everything we needed practically on the farm. Did you grow tobacco then? We didn't. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Maryland wasn't that big on tobacco. Um, they had some around Marlboro, you know. mm -hmm. but we we grew well. We grew everything we could eat, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we had animals. We had farms. Um, and uh, some brothers and sisters. I had a sister and a, a brother. Uh huh. I see we have the, the picture of uh, sister uh, here. My, um, yeah, my sister by that automobile. Little thing by a, by a Dodge in 19, let's see, what was, did that uh, say? The car, I think, was a 33 Dodge. Right? This was uh, 1932, it was dated, actually. Mm -hmm. And there's a little bitty thing there with that, uh, that, I don't think I'd seen a Dodge like that. No, I don't think it was a 33 Dodge. It wasn't a 33 Dodge. It huh. was a 23 Dodge. Uh huh. Yeah, I uh, had a new car. He had the oldest car that would run. Mm hmm. Um, he was very conservative about money. Hmm. We had three Dodges in the room, and they were all very old. Uh huh. My father had an Edsel oh, back in, uh, in those days. And then, of course, we have this. This picture that we'll see of you with your uh, with your robes. Oh yes, that's uh, a fair. That wasn't too long ago. That was when uh, Thomas More mm -hmm. was uh, inaugurating a new president. Mm -hmm. So they had those of us that were um, 
from various colleges uh, mm -hmm. put on our robes. They sent me a robe. Uh huh. And uh, I put it on and, and, uh, and stood mm -hmm. for the, the honor of representing our at Washington with the. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, the early schools. Yeah. That's pretty uh, pretty impressive that that uh, trying to think of the color that a janitor would wear, <laughs> even though the honor is there. The the work that you did was was honest. The work that you did in the military was certainly important. Yeah. When when we say uh, uh, thanks for your service, yeah. oh and my goodness, we had this one that I put on the bottom of the stack with the with my niece. Uh huh. Uh, it was either a niece or a nephew. I <laughs> can tell the difference, huh? That's right. Yeah. My wife tells about how when the, when the doctor brought in uh, the new baby and said, uh, you have, it's a boy, and she said, are you sure? <laughs> she never, never gotten over that. <laughs> like, how do you tell? Well, this is, and, the, uh, and these other pictures, these are the, with this Korea? That was Korea. Uh-huh. Being that that was, I figured, uh, somebody in the Korean worship, I was interested in it. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is... Uh, and, uh, and the Far Eastern worship. And this one? That one... Uh, that was... Um, that looks like combat place. gear. Same, same place. And... Uh, uh, yeah, that was a um, third division. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the corporal there is uh, from Puerto Rico. He's uh, Corporal Blasquez Delgado. Mm -hmm. and, uh, very fine man. In the uh, in the roster here, no, or this is a different time. The, the second division. Uh, the, the thirty-eighth. This is yeah. The third division. I went from the second to the third. The third division had uh, run into trouble. Mm. And. Um, and so immediately they had to have volunteers to go over there and uh, mm -hmm. and help out the third to get them mm -hmm. back uh, in shape. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I signed papers that said that I could I would go uh, with the third mm -hmm. and did. We had um, I still have uh, uh, friends that mm -hmm. uh, I friends. Still, uh, Keeping contact with friends that I made through the third division. Mm -hmm. It was a good outfit. What are those lumps down there? Um, are those rocks? Or is that the, something else? Um, hmm. It's been a long time. Maybe I shouldn't have asked you about that. Um, they were probably rocks. It was a rocky area. Uh huh. And, and where was this then? Uh, this was behind the front line in um, in a, what they call a Scotia Reserve. That's a Scotia, uh -huh. small. Mm -hmm. where we go behind two front two outfits that were online, uh -huh. ready to jump in where we were needed. Well, you've uh, you've got uh, you know considering that the years you were in and how long it's been since you've been out carrying the BAR, you seem to carry a kind of a, uh, what shall I say, military state of mind? And you still uh, remember that discipline? Uh, well, the know, way... Uh, we trained for quite a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you ever have any ideas, or bother, did I ask you this, about staying in or going back? I thought of, of staying in at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a sergeant, and, and, uh, and but then again, Actually, I hadn't finished college, mm -hmm. and um, I really wanted to go back. I was anxious to uh, mm -hmm. to get with the studies and learn some more, and mm -hmm. so uh, I mm -hmm. applied to college. And mm -hmm. Went back to Maryland? Uh, to Washington College. Uh -huh. And yeah. I didn't go to Maryland mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah. I, um, the, uh, Washington was a family uh, mm -hmm. tradition. Oh. My well, um, great grandfather got a degree well now. from Washington College. Uh -huh. My father and my uncle both got degrees from Washington College. Uh -huh. and, uh, 
that it, it, that's um, yeah, quite a quite a, a, a tradition. You know, all the all the stories are are uh, are so uh, interesting. But I've got a, th a thing that I that I've traditionally done, and that is to say to a person with whom I'm doing an interview, uh, what is it now that you would like to say that maybe I haven't asked, or what is a, what is a question that you maybe wish you had asked, uh, that I had asked, or that you would like to have asked so that you can answer it? <laughs> what would you like to say? particularly helpful to the present times. I'm myself still back in the times past, mm -hmm. and uh, I enjoyed the way things were. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think that if somebody were to ask what I would like to see, I would like to kind of say, I'd like to see him go backward, uh, go mm -hmm. back to catch some of the values of the past. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did have uh, certain things of the past that, uh, that I thought mm -hmm. were important that we seem to be losing today. For example? Um, my father said he never knew anybody in, among his classmates that cheated on anything. Mm -hmm. He got used to uh, expecting integrity of the of the mm -hmm. and uh, uh, that we don't expect anymore. We uh, we uh, don't look for it so much. And mm -hmm. like to see more of that. And, yeah. And, um, the, mm -hmm. That would be about the only thing, and then the military is, uh, uh, I might have, uh, if you would have uh, wondered where I thought that the Army was going to go next, or what mm -hmm. value, a value that I could uh, tell the modern soldiers, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm not too sure there was anything, but I, I do think that, uh, that they might take more of a look at uh, what an effective army might be in the future. I might mm -hmm. tell them that they might ask the people at Woodstock uh, what they think an effective army might be, and we might learn a few things there. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, the uh, next war is going to be very different from uh, the where we are now, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, I might say you might start taking a look at at certain types of relationships within the whole society here in this country, mm -hmm. we're putting women in the army. Mm -hmm. How do we, how are you soldiers of today going to relate to the uh, modern army with the women in them? And mm -hmm. I think there, that's why I said uh, Woodstock, is that you, you need a togetherness feeling of, of the people mm -hmm. whom you're, uh, you're fighting. And I think that there might be the most uh, important weapon uh, in the modern war might be the cell phone. Mm -hmm. It might be that, uh, that we're fighting, we're mixed in with uh, people that uh, that you can't tell whether they're friend or foe, and uh, and uh, it might be that you really need some sort of uh, 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 of an understanding uh, that there are going to be mistakes and all sorts of uh, problems. That it would come up in that sort of a war, yeah. but that would be the only thing. Yeah. Me and a military man thinking of the future. Oh, then, the yeah. Well, do you uh, did the, is this reflected in your writing? Um, very little. I'm usually writing on uh, on things of the past and on, mm -hmm. on the beauties of nature and mm -hmm. uh, and also the uh, the uh, directions. Of and when did you really start putting things down, expressing yeah. yourselves in yourself in, in writing? The third. Mm -hmm. And uh, in one of my writings, I um, was uh, uh, even talking to uh, other uh, poets about, uh, mm -hmm. about um, keeping our, uh, making some sort of a lasting uh, record of our writings. And, uh, mm -hmm. and one of them gave me a poem which she thought might be something that she mm -hmm. would like the future to know. Mm -hmm. And I included it in uh, one of my last uh, Mm -hmm. I wish we had uh, time here and a way for you to to read uh, some of your work. Well, um, or perhaps you memorize some. I um, I can I wrote some about the military. For instance, 
about the beauties of the military. Mm. Uh, the night when we had, uh, I would say, um, where we were in the uh, in the line mm -hmm. when they we would get bombarded, you know, when they wanted to keep us guessing about where they were going to try to probe or mm -hmm. or, uh, or um, to, and they would throw a lot of artillery onto our trenches, mm -hmm. and uh, and so you get a night of uh, thunder and noise and, mm -hmm. and the sky lit up with. Hundreds of flares all lighting up the sky, uh -huh. and, and so we watched down in the valley, and and uh, and then the light and the dawn would come, and the noise would get further and fade out, and the cool morning breezes would float all the uh -huh. flares of night out over to the tall ice-covered mountains, and then uh -huh. the first light of the dawn would come up, and they were just beautiful these uh, tall, ice-covered mountains, particularly around Sugar Lake in the second. Uh -huh. and, uh, and I remember they end up with the, a few flares left just floating away into the distance, three floating, mm -hmm. three floating lamps, yeah. floating away like yellow balloons. You were almost speaking poetry. Well, um, the distant clanging guns like a receding thunderstorm, the sky lightens. Three uh, floating lamps left hanging for the horizon. Uh -huh. And then the sky would be like, be the dark sky with the sunrise, you know, uh, cloud dragons winding reef like. Uh -huh. and, uh, and then you get these uh, tall ice covered peaks like transparent ghosts. Uh -huh. And you get the northern gray and the three floating lamps. Reminding me that there were other ghosts other than the cold, transparent mountain in the early mm -hmm. dawn. Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, what else can one say? You know, that's uh, the beauty. Remember what uh, Keith said: uh, "Beauty is truth. Truth, beauty. That is all ye knew on earth, and all ye need to know." Our greatest poet. Mm -hmm. Keith was the master of masters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this. Uh, Quite impressive. It's quite a quite a background, quite a story. The people that like Yates might say, "Well, Keith wasn't the greatest." <laughs> and somebody that loved Walter Delamere might say, "Well, Walter Delamere, he had more readable poems than any other." Uh, well, of course, we know and Shakespeare. You know where you might say, uh, "My way of life has fallen into the sear, mm -hmm. the yellow leaf, and all that which." Uh, uh, I must not look to have, but in their stead curses, not loud, but I bet you know that. Yeah. Uh -huh. well, I, I didn't have it to memory, but, but uh, Shakespeare was, a, was really the master writer. Mm -hmm. I am a big fan of Shakespeare. You know, Dansker itself means person from Denmark. And there's Act Two, Scene One, Hamlet, where Polonius tells Rinaldo to go to Paris and find out what dancers are there mm -hmm. and to look after his uh, his son. Yeah. Um, I could say uh, out out brief candle. <laughs> Life's but a walking shadow. Mm -hmm. A poor player Macbeth. that struts and frets his hour. You know, we have to say Macbeth, we have to say the, 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 uh, uh, the Scottish play. Mm -hmm. So it's bad luck to say it, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. One of my sisters-in-law was a uh, uh, Shakespeare scholar. Oh, uh, yeah. well, I did read all of Shakespeare's plays at Barbara. Oh, you know, you should come to the canon. You know, we have at, uh, at the Mercantile Library, uh, there's a, a Bill McKim, who's a, an English teacher at uh, NKU, mm. uh, comes and every month, we get together, maybe 10 or 15 of us, and discuss one of the plays. I'm a big fan of the Mercantile Library. Interesting. Have you been to the canon then? I haven't been. At all. Well, we'll have to, have to look into making sure that you get the word about that. Hey, that, that I would uh, be delighted. Well, I'm, I'm a big fan of Lloyd's Library. Hmm? Oh. I'm a big fan of Lloyd's Library. Uh-huh. I'd go there mm -hmm. and uh, read their books again. Well, you've got... Um, Try, in a sense, uh, uh, the basis of this, in a sense, is your military experience, 
but you're a, uh, would you say, a, a Renaissance man, perhaps? Well, I don't think I'm a Renaissance man because I'm, I'm um, uh, well, one thing is that the, uh, I'm in the past, and anything that's going into the future I'm, sort of leaves me out. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, um, well, I'm just not in touch with, uh, uh, I don't know how to use a computer, though I, I understand Senator Richter of Wisconsin that, doesn't use one either. Uh -huh. but, um, so uh, I might be a good company there. Anybody from Wisconsin is a good company. But so do you write or use a typewriter? Um, write long Or both? Uh, write and also um, print by hand. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't type either. I just, mm -hmm. just write. I um, had a good time with my latest. Well, I'm a long time student of King Arthur. I've mm -hmm. always thought King Arthur that from my earliest time of reading uh, the good, when good King Arthur ruled this land from mm -hmm. the history uh, rhymes, mm -hmm. uh, was, uh, that intrigued me. And, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. one of my early gifts was a book of the tales of King Arthur. Uh -huh. And so I've been studying King Arthur ever since. Mm -hmm. And here lately, my latest book was, um, was a book called King Arthur, the Astral King. That you've written? Yes. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, the, uh, the library should have a copy of it. Mm -hmm. And what's it called? Uh, King Arthur, the uh, Astral King. Uh -huh. or, uh, and King Arthur, an Astral King. Mm hmm. It uh, makes him part of the uh, theology of the land. Well, I would say your, your life certainly is, uh, is full and interesting. Well, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And hope to keep on enjoying it for many years. And in a certain sense, uh, there's no end to it. Uh, we Here. don't believe in ends. Yeah. Uh, we believe things keep on going. That's what my late uh, Aunt Mildred said when she walked out of Russia when she was six years old, mm -hmm. and she always said, we just keep a going. Yeah, that's right, we just keep going. You know? Mm -hmm. Well. Thank you. <laughs> hey, uh, well, thank you. Well, or, or should we say uh, uh, Ten Hut? <laughs>